What is going on, everyone? I have to discuss the Phillies press conference that went down with John Middleton, Matt Klentak, and Andy McPhail. I know it happened a day or two ago or so, but guess what? I needed that much time to let it settle. I needed to watch it multiple times, and I did. I sat through that garbage multiple times because I was trying to understand what the hell they were trying to tell us. I was trying to see if I could maybe figure out the message that they were trying to tell the fans. And guess what? I I couldn't figure it out. It was that much of a mess. And I'm truly embarrassed to be a Philadelphia Phillies fan right now because it's that much of a joke internally. Here's something, though, that can maybe help this situation out a little bit. That can create a little bit of positivity. Free money. I can give you free money. Use the promo code BROADS for $20 off of your SeatGeek's purchase. Get yourself to a game. Now, time for some negatives. Because this was so brutal. Really, it was as if all three guys are on different pages. It was clear as day that John Middleton was trying to set the tone saying, I'm the CEO. Okay. And then he tried to tell us what CEOs do. I don't care what CEOs do. I care that we are headed in the right direction. After the one hour press conference, I can't tell you what direction this organization is moving forward. I I I don't know what direction this organization is headed towards. What's our next move? Where are we going? Matt Klentak didn't want to let... Gabe Kapler go. I think we all knew that. Neither really did Andy McPhail. So this is what you're telling me. Two of the three upper management people wanted to keep Gabe, yet Gabe Kapler is gone. Okay, John Middleton has stepped in and really made the move happen. Here's another thing that bothers me. John Middleton was questioning Gabe Kapler since July. So, Questioning Gabe Kapler since July, yet it took 10, 11 days after the season to even fire him? Because what? Matt Klintak's in his ear saying, John, don't do it. John, don't do it. He's the right guy. He's not the right guy. And I I hate this. I hate this narrative that John Middleton's not allowed to listen to the fans. He absolutely is. I talk about this all the time. If a manager is good or bad for 10 games of 162, that's what baseball fans say. Managers will affect 10 baseball games in 162. Well, you don't keep Gabe Kapler if you're losing all of your customers. Maybe not all, but 85% of your customers. You're not keeping that for 10 baseball games. You're just not. We know that talent is what wins you baseball games at the end of the day. The manager has some effect to that, absolutely. And John Middleton was not a fan with how Gabe Kapler held players accountable, or lack thereof, of course. And he had meetings with Gabe throughout the year when when guys weren't hustling and things of that nature, and Gabe wasn't adjusting. John Middleton stepped in and made the move happen. To me, when I hear Howard Eskin ask the question, Gabe, how come Andy McPhail and Matt Klentak are still here? And he responds by saying, first off, he asked the question back, is this team better now than they were four years ago? That, that, that question's so flawed. Of course the answer is yes, but I can't say that's because of Matt Klentak. That's because four years ago, this team was even more of a dumpster fire. We still are a dumpster fire, but it's not as bad. Now, that's not credit to Matt Klentak whatsoever. That's just credit to John Middleton spending money. We move on with the same question. John Middleton's answer ends up being... Whoa, look at our bullpen's ERA in the second half. Are, are you are you serious? Because Eskin brings up the fact that we haven't had many prospects. Matt Klentak hasn't done a good job of drafting. Well, we have three in the top 100. I'm sorry, it's been four years and we have three players in the top 100? Stop. Stop. And then you're trying to sell the fan base that our bullpen's ERA in the second half was good. I mean, come on, that's crap. You're selling us crap. We know this. We're Philadelphia fans. We know this. And then the audacity, the audacity to blame Philadelphia fans and the city for Gabe Kapler leaving. 
Matt Klintak is clearly pissed off and frustrated about it. He opened up his monologue praising Gabe Kapler and how much of a great man he is. But then says it was a collaborative effort. Actually, he said, it's as much as a collaborative effort as it can be. Oh, okay, that's what I want to hear. Oh, this is sickening. It truly is sickening. I don't feel any better now than I did before. I feel way worse. I'm questioning who's going to want to come here. If I'm a manager and I hear the way these three stooges were talking to the media, I wouldn't want to come here. They weren't. They were not prepared. How are you not prepared? It's sad that Andy McPhail was the only one that seemed somewhat ready for a question because, you know, he had that, that famous quote. What what was it here? If, if we will... Uh, um, No, hold on. I have it here. If we don't, we don't. That's what it was. If we don't, we don't. Talking about getting into the playoffs. And he answered back, bang. I knew that was coming. That's what he said. I knew that was coming. I'll never make that mistake again. He was prepared. He knew what was coming. But the other guys, it was almost as if they were blindsided by some of these questions. What type of questions do you think were actually going to be asked in these moments? Tough questions. Serious questions. We need to know. As a fan base, we need to know. At one point, John Middleton gave an 11-minute answer that had nothing to do with the question. Rambled on. He was all over the place. It wasn't even close. It wasn't even relevant to what the original question was. It was a big waste of time. And we got nothing accomplished. And it's scary to think so. At the end of the day, they claimed that bad Septembers were a big problem with Gabe. And and that's one of the reasons why they, they ended up moving on from him. And, and like I said, not holding players accountable. See, Middleton will create a profile for the next manager, and Matt Klentak will execute it. Here's what, what is really going down. John Middleton doesn't want to admit he made a mistake with Matt Klentak. If Matt Klentak was not extended earlier in the year, I don't think he'd be here right now. Because Matt Klentak has done nothing. He's done absolutely nothing. Really. It's sad. It really is sad. Middleton called this a learning experience. You don't bat a thousand when hiring people, he says. And, and I guess that's for Matt Klentak hiring Gabe Kapler. Well, how about how about you, Middleton? If you don't bat a thousand, maybe you didn't bat a thousand when hiring Matt Klentak. Have you ever thought of that? Because that's a possibility, too. I remember hearing Andy McPhail talk a couple years ago when, when the whole Ruben Amaro thing went down. And he was saying, oh, hey, listen, GMs don't get an unlimited supply of manager hires. Well, how about this? Matt Klintak's yet on another one? It all comes down to John Middleton not wanting to admit that he made a mistake. He made an error. He doesn't want to pay Matt Klintak this extension and not utilize him. But this sucks because now we're seeing how much of a joke this organization really is. See, I believe John Middleton is a smart guy. Clearly, he's a businessman. He understands how things work. He he thinks things out. To an extent, I, I'm disappointed it took so long. But I think it's smart to not react emotionally, to let things settle, figure things out for real. Like I, I do think that there is... A purpose for that. I, I do believe that it's a it's a strong thing to do to kind of figure out your answers. Because he was saying, listen, he, sp- he spoke with players. And he's not going to say what went down because he trusts his players. And he told his players that everything that is said will be confidential. So he didn't speak out on that at all. And I respect that. But I think there is value in, in talking to everyone. And, and, and what he did mention was it's not so anti-Gabe as it seems it seems like it's so anti-Gabe from our perspective but there were a lot of people pushing to keep him but the, the thing that blows my mind is John Middleton has stated since July this was thought about he was gonna fire him through the season there's a there's a John Clark documentary apparently coming out an interview I wouldn't go as far as a documentary but John Clark is a part of this and and it's talking about what went down and and the fact that John Middleton almost let this guy go mid-season Yet, it took 11 days after the season to fire him. That's that's the part that's weird. There's a disconnect. None of the stories are matching up. And now we have all these people on different spots. They're all over the map right now. McPhail and Klentak seem to be kind of on the same page. Middleton's out there. 
It's clear to me, though, that it seems as if Matt Klintak is on his last straw. John Middleton is giving him one last chance. That's how I see this. John Middleton knows he gave these guys extensions. Listen, you got one more damn shot. See, I, I, I like the fact that he's involved as a CEO slash owner because he does care. Like, this guy truly does care. He wants to win. This isn't just an act and another part of his money making. He lives, dies, and breathes this Philadelphia Phillies organization. He wants to succeed. He wants to put this team in the right position. He truly cares about this team and, and thinks about it 24-7. But if you're going to have to overstep the guys you're involved with, and, and if you're going to have to overstep the guys that you hire to make big-time decisions, that's a problem to me. It is. It's a, it's a problem. And now that we see this, you know, and, and listen, as much as I give him praise for caring, I also think that he did a terrible job with this, this press conference. Because he he wasn't answering questions properly. The one hour press conference, you you gave us nothing. You gave us nothing except you told us that no one's really on the same page. You told us that you're a CEO. You defined what the CEO does. You defined the role. You told us that you made the decisions. And moving forward, Matt Klintak will make the next one. There was no structure involved, and and that can't happen. For a situation like this, you need to nail this. You need to nail this. To sell the fan base, listen, we're okay. Yes, we made a move. Yes, we fired Gabe. Okay, maybe Matt Klintak did want to keep him, but as a group, as a unit, we decided to move forward, and together we will we will be strong, and we will move on and figure it out from here. And we will we will pick the right manager, and we will succeed moving forward. Okay. Okay, give me something like that. Give me something like that. Do not sell me garbage. And that's exactly what they put on display. And I I can't even believe it. It was so bad. And in such an atrocious press conference that I had to go back and watch it several, several times. That's how ugly it was. It's mind-blowing. You sit there with your mouth and drop to the floor. Are you kidding me? Are you serious? So, that, that's where I'm at. We'll see how this team goes moving forward in terms of getting themselves a skipper. Joe Girardi, Buck, Joe Madden. Maybe they go elsewhere. Who knows? We'll see how they go moving forward, though. Um, it, it'll be interesting, but it's it's sickening. It really is, and it's very disappointing that we are where we are right now with the Phillies. It's a problem. It's a problem. Thank you guys so much. And I'll see you next time.